Hello everyone, my name is Eric Engheim. I work at 60 North, a consulting company based in Oslo, Norway, where I create educational material for Julia. In fact, I just published my first book, Julia for Beginners. But today I'm going to be talking about how to create an XML parser from scratch in Julia. So what exactly does an XML parser do? We take an XML document and we transform it into some data structure in memory that we can easily work with. There's a standard for this, which we call the document object model or DOM for short. There are many ways of doing this, but here I will explain the approach I'm following, which was inspired by a talk by Rob Pike, one of the creators of the Go programming language. This solution is based on using coroutines, which has some similarities with threads. But the key difference being that a coroutine has to explicitly give up control for another coroutine to be scheduled. In this solution, we have split the problem into two parts, a lexer and a parser, which are each run by a separate coroutine. These two coroutines communicate with each other through a channel, which is basically a queue of some limited capacity. This is how it works. The lexer reads characters from an XML file and find collections of characters that constitute a token. It then pushes this token into the channel. It keeps reading more characters, producing more tokens. Eventually, the channel is full and the lexer coroutine blocks. At this point, it gives up control and puts the coroutine scheduler in charge. It looks for available coroutines to run and finds the parser coroutine, which is then activated. The parser keeps pulling tokens out of the channel and use them to construct XML nodes. These nodes are used to make a DOM tree. Eventually, the channel is empty and control passes back to the scheduler which restarts the lexer coroutine. We keep ping-ponging back and forth like this until the whole XML file is parsed and we're left with a DOM tree. The lexer is a pretty simple object. It just has some state to keep track of what characters is currently processing and a reference to the tokens channel where it pushes the token it discovers. Notice how we create a channel with capacity 32 in the constructor. It can hold 32 tokens before the coroutine blocks and give up control to the scheduler. By the way, there's nothing special by 32. That's just a random choice. So what exactly does a token look like? It just contains two pieces of information, kind or its type, such as this is a number or a string or a tag. The lexeme, which is the actual text for that token, for instance, 42, is of type number, while the lexeme is the string 42. The heart of the lexer is a run loop. Here we manage state transitions. We can be in different states, such as in a state where we look for a text string or a state where we are looking for a tag. Lex underscore end is a state that marks the end. When we hit this state, we're done. Notice it is defined as an actual function. That is because in this solution, every state is a function. When you switch state, you switch from one function to another. When this state function is done, it will return another function, which represents the next state. That's why you see state equals state uh, L in the run loop. We execute the run loop in the context of a coroutine by providing it as an argument to a task constructor. The constructed task object is then given to the coroutine scheduler for execution. Let me give you an example of what these state functions look like and how state transitions are handled. The blue 
XML circle represents a state handled by the lex underscore XML function. In green, you can see where it emits a token, meaning it pushes a token into the tokens channel. In purple, we see state transitions by returning another state function. These match the three transition arrows you can see in the diagram. Here is another example. This is the function for the blue text state, where we are looking for characters between a begin and an end tag. Again, in green, you can see the text token getting emitted. And in purple, we have a transition back to the XML state, the start state of our lexer. So what happens at the parser end of things? Well, at the parser, we don't explicitly create a new coroutine because the main thread is basically its own coroutine. The XML parsing is kicked off with the parse XML function. The lexer will schedule first, so the parser code ends up running later. We begin with the parse underscore node function. We have these kind of parse functions for every type of node. In each of these, we are looking at receive tokens with the peak underscore token function. Depending on what token is received, we switch to a different parsing function. You can think of this as a state transition. Okay, this is all we have time for. Hope this gives you an idea of how you can easily and elegantly write a parser in Julia. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.